Um, so Kelly, uh, Sefka has become really big for you. Do you want to tell me a little bit about what, what got you there? What's yeah, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a two-part story. Um, you know, one part was uh, in 2009, sometime in the winter, um, I met David Sloan Wilson, uh, who's uh, of course an amazing evolutionary biologist. Who uh, and uh, David asked me this question: um, uh, To what extent do I look at uh, psychological health and wellness through the lens of evolution science? And you know, I was a little defensive when I first asked. You know, kind of like, well, of course, you know, I do. You know, I, you know, I'm a behavior analyst. And, selection and retention and all of that. But um, he was really asking a deeper question and, and one that it took me a little while to put it together. Uh, there's a guy named Dobzhansky who said, um, nothing in biology makes sense except in light in the light of evolution. And David was asking me a question like that, like sort of basically, um, what if it's the case that nothing makes sense in psychology except in the light of evolution and uh, I've become convinced that that is so you know I started um, the, the second part of the story was uh, that about six or seven months after that I was doing a workshop in uh, Sweden by this like lake just pristine you know no electricity no running water just these super quiet little cabins on this lake and um, I was doing an exercise with people um, and and before the exercise I was talking about values and I said well you know you can work on any value you want and uh, I said uh, or ones that you don't care about I said for example self-care uh, you know whenever I get the urge to strong physical exercise I lie down until it passes and everybody laughed. And I remember I laughed. you making that joke. Yeah, I, I did it all the time, you know, because it always got a laugh, you know, and I laughed and they laughed. And then later, we're doing this exercise, and I asked people, imagine the face of someone who you love like crazy, you know? And I thought of you know, my daughters. And, you know, when I do these exercises with people, I I do them along with, you know, and I thought of the face of one of my daughters and I thought of a moment when she caught me looking at her and I asked him, you know, as this person who you love, have they ever, you know, looked up and seen, you know, where they could see in your eyes um, how much you love them? And, um, and then I asked him, imagine the harder thing. Imagine that you were someone who you loved like that. And uh, then all of a sudden my joke wasn't funny anymore. It was just sad, you know, and it started this line of questioning like, um, when did it become okay to neglect Kelly? And, and even worse than that, like when did it become okay to joke about that neglect? And uh, I just thought, you know, I'm, I'm done with that. And so I started, and then David's question came together with that. Right. And I started thinking like, well, what kind are we? Right. And what are the needs of this kind? And then you started looking into uh, what the elements of self-care would be. And, you know, I just started, well, yeah, I started looking at what kind of creature are we and what are our sort of basic needs. And, uh, you know, and, and I started looking at really basic things, reading, like the crazy amount of science, all outside, almost all outside of psychology, uh -huh. but with clear implications for every psychological problem I've ever treated. You know, like that you can like model in social mammals um, uh, depression by isolating them. And then I start thinking, well, how well am I taking care of my social network? You can model depression and anxiety in, a, in an active, you know, kind of an animal like a rat by um, restricting their physical activity. And I start thinking, well, gee, that kind of looks like my chair at work, you know? And I'm, 
you know, I'm just like, what am I doing to myself, you know? And and, uh, and then I start recognizing how, you know, reading the kind of evolution science, like all these systems work together. And so I kind of went looking for the roots of some of the modern mental health epidemics. And I think what I found is the roots of the, the really overwhelming majority of the uh, contemporary global burden of disease. Like we don't die what we used to die from. We're dying right now from uh, this many small steps of stressors extended out over time. It's these patterns of um, uh, living that the modern world is fully reinforcing.